change Nation against nation Brother against brother Men so Good evening and welcome to Deliverance Church Langata. This is the Biblical Perspective Program. I appreciate you Kingdom TV that air this and all those that follow us on our various social platform. We are bringing a Biblical Perspective and I'm so, so honored to have a gentleman who is a leader and uh, he is a PhD candidate in the area of leadership and the presiding bishop of the Redeemed Gospel Church, this is uh, Bishop Kefa Omai. Karibu Thank you sana. very much. So good to have you. Thank you, Dr. Anjiguna, uh, people as like, usual. <laughs> <laughs> people like you are so busy. Getting you becomes a great opportunity. Uh, we would like you to, in the beginning, uh, I know we have done this before, but it's quite a while. Yeah. But I want you to introduce yourself and also introduce what brings us together, especially the team for which we have had a meeting this morning. Uh, thank you very much, Bishop. This is uh, Bishop Kefo Mai. As your father, I'm the presiding bishop of the Redeemed Gospel Churches. Uh, Redeemed Gospel Church is a sister church to Deliverance Church where we are right now. Uh, in other words, we work very closely as part of the uh, Pentecostal ministries that God has raised up uh, and is using very powerfully in this country, among others. Uh, now, Bishop, you have uh, mentioned what is this that uh, uh, we are part of. Uh, yeah. I am the chairman of the Kenya Coalition of Church Alliances and Ministries, uh, KCCM. KCCM, that's Kenya Coalition of Church Alliances and Ministries, is the coming together of the registered evangelical, Pentecostal, charismatic umbrella bodies mm. in this country. Uh, for one purpose, for collaboration. Number two, uh, so that we are able to advance the kingdom of God together and to speak with one voice on matters like what we are mm -hmm. going to discuss right now together with Dr. Njuguna. There is an area in which I want us to, as we begin this program, and I want us to make a comment. This is a biblical perspective. Right. I want us to have a discussion around the passage in the book of Acts 17, 26. Yeah. And this passage says, from one man he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. Yeah. And he determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their lands. Right. In the context of Kenya, Bishop, what does this passage mean? You see, uh, Bishop, it is true that God yes. created us. Yes. Uh, for a reason and for a purpose. Right. And he created us with different diversities. Right. When we talk about diversities, we have the people groups. Yes. We have uh, nationalities. Yes. Et cetera. Yes. And when it comes to our own country, God in his own way mm -hmm. and by his own design. Right. Uh, put Kenya where we are, mm -hmm. our land our nation, Kenya, yes. where we are in this East African uh, region mm -hmm. or this part of uh, Africa yes. for a reason and for a purpose. Right. He set the boundaries as to where Kenya will be positioned yeah. and much more so yeah. designed what Kenya shall be yeah. to other nations. Wow. In other words, Kenya as a prophetic assignment as a nation. And God put us where we are, not only to be part of East Africa, to be part of this continent, yes. but to fulfill a prophetic mandate. For, yeah, for the purpose to, of the kingdom. For the of purpose God. of the kingdom yeah. and for other nations. So Kenya exists for a reason and for a purpose. All and right. as we keep on in this discussion, we'll be talking about it. So yeah. we have our own uniqueness yeah. as a nation and with... Uh, the diversities that we have in this country. Yeah. To, we have had a prophetic uh, mantle as a nation. Yeah. And I'm privy, and most people may be her, that Kenya is a gateway nation. Right. There are five countries which have been distinguished as significant. Right. In God's purpose for Africa. Mm. And Kenya is one of them. Right. Then we have Nigeria. Right. 
Then we have South Africa. Right. Then we have Ghana. Mm. And then we have Uganda. Right. Many people who do not come from these nations, maybe we would think that I'm saying Kenya is there because I'm Kenyan. But I know that's not the reason. Mm. Because the people who have given these prophetic pronunciations are not even actually Kenyans. Right. Now, my friend Bishop, one of the things that have been very, very serious about our country is the manner in which we approach elections and the way elections d divide us along tribal lines. Right. I'm glad I'm talking to somebody who is from, 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 from the Nyanza region. Right. Originally. Right. And I'm from the central region. Right. We are very good friends. Oh, yeah. I can, you would know that I can keep your back anytime. That's it. Because we have a relationship, but our unity is in Christ. It's in Christ. Do you understand that? That's it. What are we going to do so that we do not allow politicians in every election to divide us along our tribal lines yeah. and along our party lines? Yeah. Because right now we have a reason as men of God this congregation where we are recording this, we are, cos we are completely cosmopolitan. Right. I have people from all over the nation. Mm. One time I did a survey and discovered I had 14 major people groups as part of this congregation. I'm telling you. And those are years back, actually, when I was doing my master's. Yes. Now that has even changed, has increased. Yeah. And what I did, especially when it comes to the election in time, I am very, very deliberate because I want to guide them as their pastor, but I also want to be very careful because I don't want to injure the hearts of right, everyone. Right. So I kept telling them, listen, we are going into an election. The Bible says that when we go into an election, the purpose of an election is to, 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 to deal with the aspect of quarrel. Actually, Proverbs 18, 18 says that. Yeah. A, a very, very interesting passage that when we go to election, it is supposed to divide between two strong men. Mm. And in our context, in this election that has just ended, we had two people, very, very strong contenders. One of, the, one of them was a former prime minister, uh, and the other one was the, uh, the immediate uh, deputy, president. deputy president, who is now president-elect. Mm. Mighty people who are People who are just, you know, very, very strong. According to the passage that we, we are talking about, we, we, we do know this passage of Proverbs 18, 18 says, the lot, which is a vote, uh. causeth contentions to cease. Uh. Not that. <coughs> and parteth between the mighty. Uh. Now, I want to ask you a question, Bishop. From all your theological study and everything you know as a man of God, why is it in Kenya, instead of the vote causing contentions to cease, uh. that voting causes contention to increase? You know, Bishop, you have said uh, several things in one statement. Yeah. And I want to be very emphatic yeah. because we are helping our people, yeah. the viewers that are watching Heal. this program, yeah. Yeah. Uh, first of all, to be knowledgeable. Yeah. Number two, to come to terms with uh, what has happened mm. and much more so heal mm -hmm. from some of the disappointments, uh, some of the frustrations, etc. And I want to begin by saying what we are seeing in this part mm. of uh, the continent in our country yeah. is bad politics. Mm. Because if we are to talk of uh, what politics is, mm. politics is simply politicking. Mm -hmm. That means contending for yes. governance, governance yes. positions, yes. leadership yes. positions. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about governance mm -hmm. positions, we are talking of uh, a leadership that is meant to take care of the resources yeah. of a nation, yes. the resources of a community, yes. and make sure that the lives of the citizens mm. or the lives of uh, the subjects of uh, a, a country, mm. like for example, 
in our case, our people in this country benefit mm -hmm. out of the good governance yeah. and the stewardship of the resources that God has endowed us with. Mm. And that is what actually, as far as I'm concerned, that's what governance is all about, yes. which is part of, uh, uh, it, is, uh, it, it is actual poli politics is simply contesting for a governance positions, like mm. I've said, for the purpose of uh, stewarding mm. or taking care of mm. the resources, uh, like I've said, of a country, of a community, etc. Mm. Now coming to what you have said, when you look at the kind of politics that are done in this country, yeah. honestly speaking, Bishop, um, to me, I need to help viewers to understand. Yeah. Partly, it's not what politics, politics is, is all supposed about. To be, yes. Because much of what we have seen in this country, and of course in other countries, yeah. uh, especially in this part of the continent, continent yes. is um, it borders on uh, cutting others to size, mm -hmm. so to say, yeah. using propaganda, yes. misinformation, yeah. and disinformation. Yes. I know I'm supposed to get that position mm. and you are a contender. Yeah. You are my competitor. So yes. what I'll do is uh, I will mm -hmm. make use of the propaganda mm -hmm. strategies, yeah. taint you so badly, yeah. cut you down to size, etc., mm. and make that a narrative. Yeah. And I run with it. Instead of our politics being issue-based, so, now, when we people in this country mm. pay so much attention yeah. to that kind of approach, mm. what do you expect? Propaganda, misinformation, disinformation, mm. blackmailing, etc. Yeah. What do you expect the people of a country like Kenya yeah. to do? Wow. They will wow. actually take the propaganda as if it's the gospel truth about yeah. the person. Mm -hmm. So much of what we have had, especially in the campaigns that are over, was actually um, propaganda, was disinformation, was misinformation, name calling. And there was too much noise that crowded all those narratives to the extent that we began to see some of the competitors as evil. We began to see some of the competitors as if they cannot be in a position to lead. Mm. And that's why one day I stood on our church altar and mm. I made it very clear mm. that we must learn as a people of God to separate noise, noise. from truth, yes. noise from facts. Mm -hmm. Because much of what you are hearing mm -hmm. during the campaign trails were noise, mm -hmm. all right? It was all noise, but the truth of the matter is, when people settled, they began to realize, wait a minute, apart from what I was hearing, let me check the background of this person. Let me check his performance. Let's check the manifesto. What is this person talking about? And everything was narrowed down now to the vote that you are talking about. Yes. So Kenyans woke up very early in the morning yeah. and went to the polling stations yeah. and, cast and cast their votes, their votes yeah. just like you have read that scripture. Yeah. And Kenyans went to cast their votes not for contention. Not for contention? No, 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 no. no. Yeah. And you, you'll agree with me that our people actually went to vote peacefully. Oh, yeah. I remember going to the polling station where I cast my vote and uh, believe you me, there was such calmness, there yeah. was such uh, uh, peace, tranquility at the polling station, mm. and uh, people were casting their votes and going home right, to continue with their daily activities. But you see, politicians and some of the activists, so to say, mm. kind of came in and began again to rise up with the narratives. Until we got to where we found ourselves. Yeah. Thank God that he had our prayers. We, well, because when the petition, and I thank God for politicians, yeah. because what they did, they chose the right way mm. of going to yeah, that, I was the very Supreme grateful. Court. Yeah, to say, yeah. That was the right thing to do mm. because it's provided for in the Constitution. I, I think... Uh, and uh, yeah. finally, the Supreme Court uh, listened and came up with a verdict and made a determination. And you can see, again, 
where our people are now. There is peace and calmness in the country. My, 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 my question, again, following on that, again, is a biblical perspective. The, the lot in the book of Proverbs 16, 11, I, and Bishop Ogin the one time gave us a, a, a devotion on this yeah. in one of the EK yeah. meetings. That the lot is cast, this is Proverbs 16, 33, mm. and the lot is cast into the lap, mm. but the whole disposing thereof mm. is of the Lord. Yeah. In other words, if I can add another scripture to that. Yeah. Men are the desires in a man's heart. Yes. But the purposes of God prevail. Each one of us. Yeah. All right? And yeah. I will say this, Bishop. Yeah. You had your own desires. Yes, yes. I had my own desires. Yeah. You had your preferred candidates. Uh -huh. And we are not only talking of the presidency, yeah. but we are talking of all the way to the MCA yes. uh, leadership. So I had my own also. So each one of us had our own desires. Like in my context, now that you have said that. But at the end of the day. In my context, I voted all the six. Me and yes. Bill threw away in the ballot. Yes. But I can tell you, <laughs> two, of the, two of the people I... Did not win. Did not win. Exactly. But you see, for me, I accept yeah. that since mm. everybody... Can you imagine? I kind of feel bad that uh, of 22 million registered voters... Yeah. Only 14, uh, slightly over 14, yeah. I think it was 14 million 220 some, if, I'm, if I can remember correctly, went to vote. Yeah. Now, my question is this. Why do you think there was voter apathy? Because in my view, I would have expected at least, at least about 18 million yeah. people to vote. Yeah. And if 18 million people voted, most likely the gap would not have been as narrow as it was yeah. because that would have been more votes. Mm. Why do you think Kenyans have always had voter apathy? I, I think I'm looking at it from two perspectives or from two sides. Yes. Number one, I don't think we have done enough civic education okay. so that our people are able to understand the importance of going to the ballot. Yes and making use of the vote, yes. the power yes. of the vote. I put it this way the other day mm. in Hope TV mm. where they were interviewing me. Yeah. I said, we need to look at elections as uh, an opportunity where we Kenyans are going to employ employees. Yes. The scenario of an employer em employing yes. employees. Mm -hmm. Kenyans are the employer. Yes. And you see the IBC, for example, shortlisted, mm. yeah, the possible employees, and they were presented to all of us. Mm -hmm. Right, talk of the presidency, all the way to the MCS. And they were presented before us mm. so that we can, you know, employ them. Yes. It's actually an opportunity to employ someone yeah. that is going to improve your life. So we haven't done that exhaustively, yeah. again, because I think... Our people have not really understood what politics is all about. Because yeah. we look at it and say that's a dirty game, and therefore I'm not going to be involved, I'm not going to cast my vote, etc. But also, mm. I think generally, when you look at our people in this country, they're disappointed. Yeah. They're disappointed because either they have come to a point where, okay, let me say, we as Kenyans elected leaders. And we With expected, a expectation. exactly, we expected them to perform, yeah. we expected them to deliver, yeah. but somehow they did not deliver. They did not deliver. To the so point what's where, the point? exactly, our people got to a place where they said, what's the point of going to cast a vote? And yet this person will not improve my life, will not even bring food on my table, etc. So uh, there was generally the apathy mm. situation in this country. Yeah. And that's something that we need to address as we move on, especially as uh, Kenyan, uh, the Kenyan church, we need to talk about it yes. and help our people to understand the importance of uh, casting a vote. I want to just to take a moment to again go to another Bible commentary because I know you are a student of the Bible. Mm. 
uh, in the Bible, when, what, what is to unpack the book of Daniel, chapter 4, verse 17? Yeah. Uh, and understand and ask ourselves, how did that play out in Kenya? And what can we do? Because, like I say, I know people are only, you know, the most serious loss, of course, is uh, particularly when someone has lost his aspiration for the office of the president. Yeah. But remember, there are people who invested so much to run for the governor's seat, they lost. Mm -hmm. Then others who lost uh, also from the seats of uh, mm. uh, members of parliament, mm. uh, MCAs, or women left. Mm. We had over 1,800 candidates. Yeah. Mm. And uh, like MCAs, mm. me, I don't know how people were. The, 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 the MCA list, I felt sorry for the older, older people whose eyes cannot uh, uh, see as clearly because of that ballot paper for MCAs, because they had so many. Yeah. Now, in that scripture, yeah. uh, and, and I know that uh, if you're there, maybe you can mm. read it, uh, and try to say that you can look, look to it like in the... It's the mess. situation of King and Kanesa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and and, and uh, just, just read it out in your... I don't know whether in the, in the Old King James or where in you are. In the days of Daniel. Yes, yeah. just read uh, 417. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones. Yes. To the intent that the living may know that the most high rureth in the kingdom of men. Yes. And giveth it to whomsoever he will yes. and set it up over it the basest of men. That's from the old King James Version. Yes. But the key word over there is that God is the one who rules in the kingdom of men yes. and gives the kingdom to whomsoever he chooses. Do you think the every Kenyan believes that? You, you know, um, I, I think worldviews play uh, a lot when it comes to the believing aspect. Mm. I think because of the narratives that, for example, our people had during the campaigns. And you know, politicians are very interesting. When you hear politicians say yeah. that uh, this position is mine. In fact, I'll win at 10 in the morning. By 10, I would win. And you see, you drum that over and over again. No, um, no, 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 in that context, and remember, yes. and I want you to be very, very intentional and careful. Yes. Because we are talking in a country where we have so many people who are feeling very, very upset by the judges of the Supreme Court. No, I'm coming there. I want to begin from the beginning. Yeah. The noises were made. Yeah. That's where I'm coming from. Yes. The promises were made. Yes. I mean, I'll tell you, our people heard what politicians said. Promises were made. Yes. I mean, all manner of promises were made, and our people began to see whatever politicians were saying yeah. uh, to be a reality. Mm -hmm. We promised heaven on earth. Yes. Right? But now, in, light, in the light of this scripture, yes. every politician gave promises. Yes. They said this is what they'll do. Manifestos were read, manifestos were decreed, etc. Yes. But you know what? On that fateful day yes. of casting the votes, mm. every Kenyan woke up in the morning. Mm. I don't know about you, Bishop. Yeah. But in my mind, as I was going to the polling station, mm. I was thinking of who to cast my vote for. All right? Mm. In certain positions. Yes, yes. But as I was on the queue, mm. and I'm praying and I'm reflecting, yeah. when I got into the polling station, yeah. I know of two positions that I changed in my mind. Yes. I said, no, I'm not going to cast my vote on this one. I'm going to cast my vote on this one because I began to think of the qualities of that leader. Yes. And I began to think of uh, the performance the person has had before. Yes, before. And immediately I said, I'm not going to vote because this mm. person comes from my place. Mm. I'm not going to vote this person because of A, B, C, D. Mm. I narrowed down to the leadership qualities and the criteria.
you that know, we had you know, Bishop, that we had stood for. I realize our time is almost yeah, running so out. Yeah, so let me finish. Yes. So that at the end of the day, mm. what happened was this. Mm. When I was going home, I was satisfied in my peace. heart. Yes. I had a lot of peace in my yeah. heart that I've done the right thing. Now, we went to our homes, our businesses, waiting for the verdict. Okay. And the verdict was declared. Mm. Now, coming to what you have mentioned, yeah. the leaders were elected. Yeah. Coming to the presidency, yeah. right? I'd cast my vote. Yeah. And I waited for the yeah. declaration. Yeah. You were at the bombers of Kenya. Yes. And I was watching everything that was going on yeah. while in prayer, at the same time asking God for intervention. Yeah. Now, of course, like we said again, there are those mm. who are grieved, they went ahead, and the Supreme Court finally made a verdict. I will tell you from deep within my heart, mm. I believe that there is a reason as to why we have the Supreme Court, mm. and the Supreme Court listened, mm. they paid attention to what was presented before them, yeah. and came up with a determination. So yes. as a responsible Kenyan, and as a leader, I yeah. have no other obligation, all right? to challenge the mm. verdict of the Supreme Court. Yeah. And this is the clarion call yeah. that I would wish to give to all leaders, yes. and especially our people, mm. that the Supreme Court made the determination. Why can't we rest it there? You see, and move on. Let me, let me put it this way, before, before we get out of this. The information we have that was reported in the press yesterday, yeah. it says Raira petition failed on lack of evidence and falsified documents. Mm. What every Kenyan need to ask themselves is that true? And we can't challenge anything. Yeah. Those who followed the hearing, mm. there are two issues that came up mm. that every Kenyan must really, really come to terms with. It was discovered that somebody had signed an affidavit mm. bringing an affidavit to challenge the outcome of the 22 elections using the data of 2017, uh. and he made it to the court. Uh. But just in time, he then wrote another affidavit to withdraw it. Uh. But it was already uh. there. My question is this, on, on points of morality, and you're going to answer briefly because I realize we are out of time, and then we're going to pray. What are we going to do in this country to ensure that nobody would take who lift a Bible to make a swear, swearing that he will say truth and nothing but the truth when they know they have a false document. That's an unfortunate situation, Bishop, in this country. Yeah. It's an unfortunate situation. Yeah. I watched the proceedings yeah. up to the determination. Yes. And I'm sorry to say, yeah. chapter 6 of the Constitution yeah. need to apply across the board. Thank you. I want you to pray. Our loving Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for this session that we have had, looking at what has happened in this great nation, thank and you, much Jesus. more so, dear Father, to know that we prayed and we yes, have prayed. Yes, yes. You have taken over, mm. and this nation is in your hands. This nation is in your heart. Father, I pray that you may take over. Let there be healing in this nation and let your purposes prevail as we trust you for the greatest move of God that is about to hit this nation. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for hearing this prayer, mm. and thank you for this program mm. and your servant. May your name be glorified even for the interactive programs hereafter. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray.